You've connected with a new friend in the jungle. An arrow appeared at the top of my phone screen. Above it was a username, Eddie Jokes. Below, a distance as the arrow bombed with my motion to keep pointing at the funny guy, Eddie. Four meters. I looked down the train car and saw an older, heavy-set man with a long black and gray beard sitting further down on the opposite side. He didn't look like he was that jolly. In fact, he looked a little ill-tempered and morose. But he had earbuds in and the arrow and distance were right, so it must be him. Turning back to my phone, I hit play. My ears were suddenly filled with the bright sounds of K-pop and I burst out laughing. So, what's it called? I shrugged as I took a bite of my sandwich. Share jungle? It's weird, but it's kind of cool. Mari looked over her salad at me skeptically. It sounds weird and dumb. Meeting creepers and their creeper stuff? Laughing, I rolled my eyes at her. <laughs> You're so dramatic. It's not like that. It's just this app that, like... So, like, if you're listening to some streaming app or whatever, and you have Share Jungle on, other people that are close by will get a pop-up that you're near, and they can click play to hear what you're listening to. It's like a weird social experiment way of finding new music and learning about people. I smirked. Or, if you see a cute guy, you can use it as a conversation starter or something. She grimaced. Uh, I guess. But, what, the app just listens to whatever you're doing on your phone? I shook my head. No, you have to log into your streaming apps and give permission. They have some beta feature where you can share media files on your phone if they aren't copyrighted, but I didn't turn that on. It's not like it's listening to your phone calls or something. Mari pulled out her phone and poked at it skeptically. I don't know. I'm going to be at the airport for hours today, so maybe it'll be funny. She shot me a dark look. But if I get hacked or something, you're buying me a new phone. I groaned as my phone started chiming in the dark of my bedroom. Picking it up, I saw it was four in the morning, but I also saw it was Mari. She'd only been in London for three days, but I could tell things weren't going great with her father. The trip was supposed to last another two weeks, but I wondered if she'd last that long. Wiping out my eye, I answered the call. Bitch, you know it's still in the middle of the night here, right? I... I know. I'm sorry, but I really needed to talk to you. Sitting up, I felt instantly awake. I'd been friends with her since we were 12, and I'd only heard her sound scared like this a couple of times. What's wrong? Are you, are you okay? There was a pause, and her voice was trembling when she spoke again. I don't know. I think I may be in danger, but it may just be me being an idiot, too. Working to keep the frustration out of my voice, I tried again. Just calm down. Tell me what happened. So? Well? Things with Dad have been about like I figured. It's okay, but when he suggested I get out and explore some yesterday, I took him up on it. Got on one of those big red tourist buses, the double-decker like in Harry Potter or something. It was cool, and London is pretty neat. I haven't been here since I was like eight, so it's all pretty new to me. But I made the mistake of picking the long tour. After the first hour, I had another hour to go, and I was getting kind of bored. I didn't want to get off because it was pricey, but I also started fiddling with my phone more. I decided to listen to music while I looked at the scenery. I told you I installed that Share Jungle app, and it was kind of fun using it in Atlanta and Gatwick. I didn't know if I'd had any luck on the bus, or like how many people ever even heard of it over here, but I picked up a couple. Their music was shit, so I kept going, but it did make me feel a little less lonely sitting up on that bus by myself. Then I got a new notification. A new user, his name was The Path, came on. And the notification was different than the others. It, it said personal media files under the name. 
I almost didn't click it. But then I did. And at first, I almost busted out laughing. I, I thought I was listening to a porno or something. I could hear this woman screaming and... Well, I'd figured some dude had started watching porn and forgot he had sheer jungle on, but... It wasn't that. I started hearing banging. It sounded like someone beating on a wall or maybe breaking through a door. And then the woman was screaming louder and begging. This wasn't some role play either. She was really scared. And then the stabbing sounds started. It's weird. I've, I've never seen someone get stabbed or even get really badly hurt, but as soon as I heard those sounds, I knew what it was. My mind hadn't even had a chance to go there yet, but... But I knew. My heart was pounding now, and I couldn't help but cut in. Uh, maybe it was just a horror movie or something. I know it says it won't stream stuff from your phone that's copyrighted, but half the time that shit doesn't work, right? Could have been something like that. I could feel her thinking on the other end of the line. It's possible, but... I don't think so. The woman... The sounds she started making when they were killing her... I could tell she was crying now. I've never heard a movie that sounded like that. Letting out a shaky breath, I nodded to the empty room. Okay. Sorry. What did you do? I didn't know what to do. We ran a stoplight when I started listening, so I'd hoped the distance would go up when we started forward again, but it didn't. Wherever it was, they weren't on the street nearby. They were on the bus with me. At first, I just turned it off and put my phone away. I didn't want to act strange or anything. Draw the attention, you know. So I just sat there, terrified, staring out at whatever we were passing by. When we got to the next stop, I got off the bus and walked a couple of blocks. Went to a coffee shop, just sat there for a while, trying to calm down and give the bus time to get far away. It wasn't until I pulled back out my phone that I realized I'd accidentally started playing my own music when I'd put it up on the bus. And I had a notification on the top of my screen. You've connected with a new friend in the jungle. Josie 08 is listening to your sick beats. I... I'd never had someone connect to mine before, so I didn't know. Or at least I didn't think about it. When someone listens to your stuff, you get notified too. You, you, you get the same arrow and distance they do, and you see their username. Whoever was on that bus with me, they knew I'd heard. If they were paying attention, they knew I was on the bus with them, and that the distance got further away when I got off. It freaked me out. Uh, of course it did. Even though it was expensive, I called a taxi and waited until it got there to go back outside. I even had it take a weird route back to my dad's, just in case someone was trying to follow me. I know, all this sounds overdramatic, probably. Honestly, I was starting to feel silly by the time I woke up this morning, freaking myself out over some dumb thing I heard when no one had bothered me, and it probably was a porno or a horror movie or something after all. Telling myself it was to just show I wasn't scared anymore, I made myself open share jungle again. One nearby user popped up right away. The path. Jesse, they were only 30 meters away. They were outside my dad's fucking house. I... I don't know what to do. I don't have anything to tell the cops or something, and if I tell Dad, he'll think I'm just being stupid. But I know something is wrong. There's no way that's a coincidence. Somehow they followed me here, and you're the only one that'll believe me. Jesus. I, I mean, yeah, I believe you. Doesn't mean you're in real danger, but who knows. 
People are crazy and you can't take a chance with that. I think you should talk to your dad about it anyway. He might know someone at the police station that can look into it or at least be on the lookout if someone is creeping around. She sighed. <sighs> yeah, maybe. I just don't know that it'll do any good. I felt myself growing irritated. If he won't listen, then fuck him. Come on back home. Murray gave me a little laugh. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. He's at a meeting right now, but when he gets home this afternoon, I'll talk to him about it. You just... Just go back to sleep. I'll text you later. You sure? We can talk more if you need to. No, I'm, I'm okay right now. Talking to you made me feel a little better. Good night. Then she was gone. I had trouble getting back to sleep, finally getting up at 6 and heading into work. I kept checking my phone throughout the morning, and when I didn't hear anything from her by noon, I called her. No answer. Tried again a couple of hours later, and then a few minutes after that. The last time, her father picked up. He told me that the police were there, and let him answer the call when I called back again so soon. That he'd gotten home an hour earlier to find the house had been broken into. He started crying then. His words barely comprehensible islands of meaning in between his racking sobs. He found Mari on the stairs. Someone had stabbed her to death. That was... Over a month ago. In some ways it seems like time is stretched on forever, while in others it seems like it just happened. I've tried to be there for Mari's mother and little sister, but it's been hard. Not just because I miss her so much, but because I feel like I'm to blame. If I'd given her better advice, if I'd made her call the police right then, if I'd not told her about that fucking app, Funny thing is, I still have it on my phone. Much as I hate it now, I can't quite make myself get rid of it. I think a part of me feels like I deserve the punishment of being reminded every time a pop-up notification or I see it on my home screen. I haven't really used it since then, though. I don't want to be around anyone, much less connecting to random strangers. Until yesterday. I forced myself to get out of the house and walk around, and before long I found myself back at the same sandwich shop that me and Mari used to go to all the time. My chest felt like it was going to cave in as I picked the same outside table we'd sat at when I first told her about the app. I managed to hold off until I ordered. Not my usual, but this weird club sandwich that Mari always used to get. And I took out my phone and opened Share Jungle. If I was going to open my wounds, I needed to get the salt deep. The search icon spun for a second and then found one connection. Reading it, I dropped the phone to the table like it was hot. I couldn't be right. The path. Fighting for breath, I started looking all around. There were people on both sides of the street, but no one that stood out. Glancing back at my phone, I saw that the arrow was pointing down the street and said the distance was about 200 meters. I didn't know what to do. Should I go look for them? How would I find them? And if I did, what would I do? Get myself killed, most likely. And I could call 911, but did I have enough to tell them that they could help? Would they even take me seriously? Blood pounding in my ears, I fished around in my bag for headphones, finally finding them. I connected to the phone. I have hoped the name and the arrow would be gone by now, but it was still there. The path. Personal media files. 201 meters. I hit play. My head was 
suddenly filled with screams of pain and terror as my gorge began to rise, my eyes filled with tears. That motherfucker. That motherfucking. It was Mari. I was listening to Mari get murdered. Ripping out the earphones, I jumped from the table and ran in the direction the arrow pointed. I didn't care anymore. Any fear or worry had been replaced with blind rage, and I just wanted the compass to guide me to the thing that did that to her so I could tear it apart. 160 meters. 115 meters. 92 meters. And then it was gone. I went to the police, and after waiting an hour, I talked to a detective that listened attentively before politely pointing out that I had no recording to play for them and no leads for them to investigate. He said that even examining my phone wouldn't amount to anything, as they didn't have a way of tracking the app's users without a search warrant to the company, and I didn't have enough to get them one. I left there last night, angry and depressed, wondering what else I could do until the path found me again. When I got home, I checked every room thoroughly and locked myself in the bedroom, steak knife in one hand, phone in the other. I was finally falling asleep when my phone chimed. You've connected with an old friend in the jungle. My heart sped up. The path... Putting in my headphones, my hands were shaking so bad I had hit the play button twice before I could get it to start. When it did, I felt my brain shudder as a wave of deja vu passed through me. It was two people talking, and I, I recognized the voices. It was me and Mari. It called? Share jungle. It's weird, but kind of cool. It sounds weird and dumb, meeting creepers and their creeper stuff. Vision swimming, I looked toward the window and then back down at my phone. The path. Personal media files. 45 meters. 41 meters. 36 meters. You know what I've always thought was surreal? passage of time. I often stop to think about how different our world is with every passing moment. I think about how those moments add up to minutes, hours, days, and years, and how they bring about unfathomable change. Think about all these things that would be considered magic hundreds of years ago, from cars to phones to the internet. We live longer, we create virtual worlds, and We've changed entire ecosystems simply because we can. It's really fascinating stuff. But personally, I'm more into the little things. The simple changes in our norms and traditions that are often overlooked, underappreciated. I frequently wonder what our world, or rather, what my world, would look like if those traditions were different. As an example, there used to be a time when kids wanted clowns at their birthday parties. I'm sure that if you suggested such a thing today, your kid would give you a strange glare that said, Why on earth would I want someone in creepy makeup at my birthday? Guess they don't find as much amusement in balloon animals when they've had iPads since they were two, but I digress. I was having a conversation with my wife about what to do for our son Adrian's sixth birthday. She suggested we go the standard route and take him and some of his friends to an amusement park. But being the overachieving father that I am, I wanted to do better than that. I wanted to give Adrian an experience that I knew he'd hold in high regard for the rest of his life. Or at least over the next few years. What if we throw him a birthday party with a clown? I suggested. My wife scoffed. <laughs> a birthday party sounds great, but a clown? I don't think any kid today would be thrilled to see a clown. Hell, most adults wouldn't be too comfortable around one. Come on, I pleaded. I think he'd really enjoy seeing one. He could do magic tricks. Plus, we could have food and a bouncy house. Kids love those things. My wife crossed her arms and 
eyed me up and down, intensely suspicious of my motives. Placing her hand to her chin, she gave me a wry smile and pointed out, You just want to relive some of your nostalgia, don't you? I couldn't deny it. I wanted my son to have the same fun I did when I was a kid, and damn it, if a clown was going to be part of that, then I didn't see the harm. Still, my wife gave me a little bit of pushback, but in time, she reluctantly agreed and went about setting everything up. The clown we ended up going with came from a somewhat sketchy website. In hindsight, we should have gone to a more reliable source, but as you may expect, party clowns aren't exactly in vogue these days. We figured what we got was what we got, and that would be good enough. Luckily for us, preparations for everything else went great, and we were able to get a few friends and family to help set everything up. On the day of the party, everything had been a complete success. The kids were happily playing, the parents were excited to see their kids enjoying themselves. The party was going according to plan. After cake, we managed to sit all the kids down in the backyard for the guest of the hour, Bongo the Clown. But from the second Bongo came through the back door, I knew this shit would be a disaster. A boisterous clown with a large suitcase strolled through the door in typical clown attire. The goofy yellow suit, large shoes, big red nose, white makeup, and rainbow wig were a clown's textbook trademarks, and at first glance, he definitely fit the bill. Still, the raspy, cigarette-burned voice, cold eyes, and forced smile told the story of a man who I could easily tell really didn't like being laughed at. My wife whispered to me that the man gave off the vibe that he'd seen more dead bodies than laughing children. Hello, boys and girls, he said while giving them a goofy wave. My name's Bongo the Clown. I heard we had a special little man here. I don't think Adrian knew what to make of the clown. I could see the gears turning in his head, trying to make out just what was in front of him and what the proper way to respond should be. Before he got a chance to really figure it out, one of the girls attending the party shouted, We don't like clowns! from behind him. Both her moms were chaperones at the party and quickly ran over and scolded her for insulting the man. For the smallest fraction of a second, I could see the man flash a scowl that matched the fleeting daggers he had in his eyes. He must have caught himself showing how he truly felt, because he quickly switched back to kid-friendly mode by responding with a nervous laugh and an attempt at a witty retort. Well, little girl, between you and me, I've heard that clowns is a jerk, but Bongo is full of fun. He pulled a balloon from a tiny pocket in his chest, gave it some air, and quickly fashioned it into a shape of a dog. He then politely handed it to a boy in the front row with a wink. The little boy cautiously took the balloon animal, but one look back at his disapproving peers destroyed any hope of him taking it as a gesture of peace and goodwill. Turning back to the balloon animal, he frowned and yelled, She's right! Clowns are stupid! Popping the animal as he did. Immediately after, another young girl in the front row followed with, And you smell funny! Before long, there was a mini uprising of kids, each one making sure to voice how much they hated Bongo the Clown. One especially unruly child even launched a piece of cake at Bongo where it lodged in his wig. The rest of the parents and I had to step in to calm everyone down before the children started a full-blown riot. Quickly, I managed to sneak Bongo into the house, where I helped him clean off the cake and change back into the street clothes he had in his suitcase. Hey, look, man, I'm, I'm really sorry, I started. I didn't think any of this would happen, and I'll, I'll pay for the whole day. The now semi-normal-looking man stared at me with a disapproving look. He scratched at his patchy beard and ran his fingers over his bald head before waving me off and going back into his suitcase to pull out a small bottle of rum. You know, he said, taking a large swig. You got some pretty shitty kids out there. He then took another gulp and muttered something about them being little bastards. 
I understood the guy had a rough go of it, but that seemed overly harsh to me. I got that their behavior was not acceptable, but at the end of the day, they're kids. And I felt the need to confront him about how he was treating him. Hey, that's my boy and his friends you're talking about. I'm sorry about what happened out there, but most of these children are years away from reaching double digits. Cut them some slack. And that's an excuse. Maybe you should do your damn job as a parent and teach those fuckers not to treat people like that. Four parties like this just this week and I always sit back and take it. All because I'm the clown, right? You're supposed to make fun of me. I'm just trying to make a damn living. I was not going to stand there and be lectured about parenting by a clown. I marched up to him so that we were almost nose to nose and stuck my finger in his face. Look, I said I'd pay you and that I'm sorry. But if you keep insulting my parenting and my kid in my home, you're going to have a lot more to worry about than a broken ego. He scoffed. <laughs> yeah, okay. Packing all his stuff into a suitcase, he turned to leave. But just before he got to the door, he stopped and turned around to look me in the eye. You know, I bet half these kids are probably monsters at home, too. Parents don't want to put up with their constant bullshit, and yet they do... Because if they didn't, then those kids would spend hours and hours bitching. He sighed. But I suppose it's your kid's birthday. And you did order a clown. Not enough kids get to see clowns these days. A disgusting smile started to form on the man's face. So, how about I give them a clown? He dropped his suitcase to the floor and I watched in pure disgust and horror as his already wide smile stretched literally from ear to ear. His lips began taking on a blood red pigmentation as they puffed about three times their size. Rows of long thorny-like teeth began pushing through his gums and his already pale skin turned to a pearly white. Tufts of patchy brown hair started to emerge from the right side of his head and a seam formed in the middle of his face giving it a stitched together mask-like appearance. Dark circles appeared around his now milky white eyes as they widened to the corners of his face. And in the center of it all was a large, goofy red nose. I was so focused on his face changing right before my eyes that I was shocked to see his clothes had reverted back to the clown costume he was wearing earlier. He was also now twice as tall with disproportionately lanky arms and legs with fingers tipped in talons. He let out a petrifying cackle as he slammed straight through our closed back door. I ran outside in hopes of catching him only to meet the multiple pairs of terrified eyes looking above me. I spun around to see him climbing to the top of our house, looking down on us and salivating. Everyone was frozen in fear, and I could tell that he took pleasure in seeing our frightened faces. In an instant, he swooped down, positioned on all four of his now backward-facing limbs. He moved with incredible speed, managing to literally slash through the cloud of screaming people. I remember watching as he pounced on top of one of the parents and ripped their jaw off in one fluid motion, laughing violently as he went. There wasn't anything in his path he didn't make an effort to destroy. In a desperate attempt to defend themselves, one parent took the cake knife and tried to stab the demonic clown, but he merely laughed as the blade made contact. No blood came from the wound, and the clown made an awful joke about how he wasn't going to cut him off that easily before driving his hand straight through the man's heart. Perhaps the most sickening was when he chased down the little girl that threw the cake at him. He corralled her up against the wall, unhinged his jaw like a snake, and in a flash swallowed her whole, the muscles working her body down his throat like a snake. But when he locked eyes with my son... I... Everything happened in slow motion. Adrian was cowering in a corner, unsure of what to do or where to go. I ran toward him. I didn't think I'd be able to stop that clown, but I could at least get in front of him and maybe buy Adrian some time, but it was... It was as if the clown could see in 360 degrees. Without taking so much as a glance at me, he snatched me up by the neck with his impossibly long reach before I could even reach my boy. He held me in the air with a tight stranglehold, just barely giving me room to breathe. 
Bongo loomed over my son. It looked down on him like a hawk eyeing its prey. Slowly, he leaned toward Adrian until they were face to face. And then he spoke with that same human raspy voice. He spoke, Hey Adrian, I got a joke for you. I could see the pools of saliva forming under him. My son had no words. All he could do was scream and cry in the face of the creature. Bongo laughed. <laughs> no, no, I swear it's hilarious. If you answer this correctly, I won't kill you and your dad. Why does the clown call the little boy he made smile? I screamed for him to go away and that I'd do anything to make this right. He simply slammed me on the ground and told me to shut my mouth. For a moment, his voice taking on a much more demonic quality before turning back to my son. He looked deep into Adrian's eyes and in a moment, I'll never be able to explain, I saw Adrian smile as his whole body relaxed. That's right, boy. <laughs> That's right, Bongo exclaimed in a sing-songy voice. A fucking happy meal. And in less than a moment, Adrian was gone consumed by the clown that I had hired to make him happy. The demonic thing before me let out a loud belch and stood upright. He turned to me for a moment and flashed a smile. I watched frozen as he calmly collected pieces of the various body parts strewn about and stuffed them into his large suitcase. Making his way to the back door, he spun around and announced, Thank you all, you've been a terrible audience. He then took a bow and disappeared. Moments later, I heard his car driving away. The police were called. Not just by the surviving parents, but by the neighbors who heard the chaos. Everyone had a million questions, and we did what we could do to give them answers. No, I don't know what happened. Yes, he was a clown. No, I wasn't under the influence of drugs. No, I'm not lying to you. I must have said those statements thousands of times over. I even managed to show them the site where I hired Bongo. It was weeks of questioning and evidence collection. Maybe it was the alcohol, the imminent divorce, or my general numbness to everything, but I never even saw anything on the news. There was no big story about the massive party massacre at the hands of a crazed clown creature. I remember finding it odd. It should be everywhere. There's something out there that's insanely dangerous and the whole world should be doing everything they can to make sure it's dead. That is until my buddy who works at the department told me that the cops actually believed our story. They'd seen footage of the thing from our neighbors and had looked into similar incidents. Still, they didn't want to cause a panic over something they had no control over. In fact, they tried to hide the evidence, pay people hush money, and convince the general public that there was a tragic accident. A drunk driver crashed through the backyard or something like that. I, I don't remember. Either way, they were cops, not demon hunters. <laughs> what a load of horse shit. Honestly, fuck them. You see, ultimately the passage of time has been an interesting thing. I suppose some things take more time to change than others. For Bongo, mere seconds is what it took to become something completely inhuman. My transformation has been much more of a slow burn, but I know I've changed too. Most notable developments include my many new addictions. One of which being the drinks I'm partaking in right now. But perhaps the thing that is the most self-destructive is my new life path. I've bought a house in the middle of nowhere and dedicated the past ten years to find that damn clown. I've seen a lot of information regarding things like him and the trail of destruction and pain they left behind before. It's 
far too much to get into here, but I figured knowledge is the greatest weapon I can have. Once I feel satisfied that my weapon is strong enough, strong enough to take him down, we'll see who gets the last laugh. Hey everyone, before we end the video, um, that last story is in a way connected to some of Brian's other stories, all of which I've narrated here on the channel. They are connected to the I Investigate Disturbing Cases stories. There is a big video on the channel. I'll try to remember to link it below. It is a four hour long video. If you want to get caught up on all the freaky shit that is included in that series, that is definitely the video to watch. It's an incredible series, one of my favorites that I've read on the channel. And like I said, the story is slightly connected to it. You'll, you'll see what I mean if you go listen to the video. Anyway, I hope you all had a very safe, very fun, and uh, just good Labor Day weekend. I was working all weekend, but it was fine. Anyways. I hope you all have a wonderful day, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. Stay safe as always, and uh, take care of yourselves.